yeah, we're here. Dallas Cowboys, a lot of interesting things uh, that are going on. Dalton Schultz reports to minicamp. I knew he wasn't going to sit out because you just signed that one-year um, deal, the franchise tag. You ain't going to get fined up to no 100000 k by uh, already sitting out. So I knew he was going to be there. And then, you know, like we said, we got some young rookies shining right now in these mini camps. And, you know, what's your kind of thoughts on the Cowboys right now? Mini camps around. What's your kind of feeling about a DDP? I'm always intrigued anytime, um, you know, you got a, a couple of rookies coming in, standing out, playing well. Um, by the way, real quick on that last note, uh, the Mitchell Robinson thing was Sports Illustrated. Um, I think it was Dalton Trigg specifically who reported that and uh, Smoking Cuban, who I used to write for also. Mm -hmm. um, now they kind of piggyback off that. They're more just saying that's confirmed, not confirmed, but they're more so just kind of saying like, this is what's not like they're the actual reports in that case. But uh, as for the Cowboys, yeah, anytime you're in, in that situation where you've got a couple guys coming in and flashing, that's always going to get my attention a little bit, but I always take it with a grain of salt at the same time we've we see these guys come in and through mini camp and training camp shine pretty bright and that's not to say that they're you know that it's fool's gold or anything like that but sometimes you hear about like oh here's this third year player coming in and he's blowing people away and then by the time you get to the latter part part of training camp it kind of tails off a little bit and they're not a big role player or a big factor in the season itself mm -hmm. You've obviously got a couple of prospects that you're really intrigued about right now, so you feel a little bit different about it. I'm certainly hopeful that uh, Williams can bring a lot to this team, but um, you know, I, I kind of just have to see it. I do feel like the ability is there, but it's a matter of if he's going to be able to come in and make that immediate jump and be a, a impact player right from the gates. You know, it's like Micah Parsons set a pretty incredibly high bar. Don't don't have to live up to that, obviously, but it, are you going to be able to step in and compliment him well to help the overall uh, pass rush? Yeah, I think uh, with that situation, um, you know, he's going to be sneaky as far as, uh, you know, Sam Williams coming in. But I think the good thing about it is that you got Doran Armstrong Jr., who you brought back in the fold. He had a career year across the board. Um, you got Dante Fowler, who um, he's still a young guy. Um, he's not too far removed for a uh, double digit sack season. And he really didn't get to work with Dan Quinn like he wanted. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to look at that and say, um, that's a good solid base. And I feel like if you can have a Williams who you probably want starting by mid season because he's a second round draft pick, but right now you can put him as a spot pass rusher because I think that's what he's going to be better at right now because he still needs to develop on other parts of his game. But if you can come in and let him spot pass rush and, uh, you know, there were reports yesterday um, from Dave Hellman and we know it's, it's not pads. We know they're not hitting. We get it. I understand that. Uh, but they said he got four sack four. uh, unofficial sacks, uh, was beating the brakes off of Matt. Well, let's go putting him in a turn spin. And I think he got one on Terrence Steele. So you're excited Thanks. about that. You know what I mean? You're, you're very excited about that because that's another guy who can rush off the edge and he has great size and speed. Mm -hmm. So you're excited about that. Now, another young rookie who's been turning up, who was out for a little bit and everybody was like, what's up is Jalen, uh, Tober, the third round draft pick from Southern Alabama. Yeah. Now, you already have Michael Gallup out. We know about the injury. We know about Mark Cooper being gone. Uh, a lot of guys are sitting out. CeeDee Lamb. A lot of receivers are sitting out right now. So you got the Vasher, um, Simi Fehoko. Those guys are trying to really let people know about themselves this year with the other guys out. But Jalen Rookie has Jalen Tober has come right in, got a couple pass interference calls, had a few touchdowns from Dak Prescott. Those two are always communicating and talking with each other. Yeah. So right now. Um, you're feeling kind of good, even though he's a rookie DDP. Jalen Tober coming in, especially with a Michael Gallup coming out, could come in and surprise people, man. Uh, and a lot of people are pumping them up outside of Dallas saying that was a great pick. What you think? Uh, as I fix my camera here, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, certainly, I'm certainly intrigued. I, I don't know much about him, admittedly, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm always intrigued if you got someone that's able to come in and make an impact. So... Based on what you're saying, yeah, that's that's something I'm definitely intrigued by. Yeah, and also, not just that, 
some other things that the offense, because we've been really talking about, they've been really been talking about the offense. I felt like the offense was going to be behind the defense, DDP, because mm-hmm. of the losses. And then you have uh, Dan Quinn coming back, and you really only really lost Randy Gregory. You brought everybody to the fold, and you added through the draft. But there's some things that talks have been talking about in there, and I want to get your opinion on because me and you both talked about this prior. Number one, Dak Prescott. They're saying he's looking lean, leaner, bendier. You know, he wasn't big and stocky, so maybe he's getting a little bit more of his twitch back where he's got more movement and he could possibly be running more. Um, that's what's been said in the offense that he's probably – and I feel like that's an element DDP that he still needs to do. Not all the time, but there was a lot of times I felt in the season where there were open lanes for him to run and he didn't do it. I don't oh, know yeah. If it he, was the, he, there's no question that he was reluctant mm-hmm. to run at times and how much of that was the the mental kind of – reluctance and fear from having broken his ankle the way he did the year before and how much of that was just the physical limitation you know having that steel plate and everything in his leg how much that made it so i I definitely thought once it kind of became clear he was reluctant to run that it was problematic uh for the offense because it seemed like teams were almost daring him to do it once they realized he really wasn't going to do and that Mm -hmm. made things a little more difficult for, uh, for the thing overall yeah. Um, how do you feel about it? Do you want do you want to see more of that in his game or do you want him to kind of hey, let's kind of stay in that pocket? Um, I think he needs to at least have the threat of it, the willingness to turn to it. And again, once once it became clear he wasn't going to do that much, particularly after he came back from the calf strain uh, last year, mm-hmm. I, I think that's when things got a little more difficult. It's not like he's a guy that you ask to take off and run. 20 yards downfield or scramble and do a whole bunch of stuff. He kind of dances around and he's just got to be willing to tuck it and run when he has to and pick up six, seven, eight yards or something. If, you know, if the other team's in a man coverage and he's got open field ahead of him. So he's not, he's not a guy with blazing speed, obviously. So it's not like he's got to turn on the burners, but he just has to be willing uh, to move. And that's why I feel like there was just a combination of things, part of it, mental part of it, physical. And yeah, uh, you know, we know what his training camp last year was with the long previous off season with the ankle, then the, the strain ligament, uh, what was that ligament even called like the older ligament or something basically like, in his, know. it was, it was, it was basically up, in his <laughs> armpit. Right. Um, and then, you know, then you get the calf strain in the season. So yeah, no, no question, no doubt. I'm not surprised that uh, he was carrying more weight than usual and not his, you know, full fit self to play at his best. But that said, you know, do I want him running more? Mm, probably not in the big picture, but I at least want him to be willing to run a little bit more so you at least keep that threat present. Uh, see me, I want him to run more. I don't know. He don't have to have like, you know, I liked it when they had those read option plays and they had those designed runs for him that you mm-hmm. can put in the game. Um, because as long as you play smart, um, you'll be okay. I just feel like that was a freak accident when he made that run against the uh, New York nice, Giants. Yep. And that just had, that just kind of happened. And, uh, you know, I don't foresee that. And I, I feel like, you know, that got to be a part of this game because, like you said, DDP, the threat, it's got to be a threat. They got to think that you are possibly going to tuck it down and run. Yep. And then it, it changes the dynamic of the defense when they know you are that dual threat guy. And I feel like it needs to be incorporated at least a little bit in this offense to keep him a little bit honest uh, because, you know, it's third down and three and that ain't lane is open to run and you can get that first down. You still looking to try to scan the field to do something. Just, just, just run the ball, dog, because I've seen like Russell Wilson. Those guys, he's older now. But guess what? If Russell is, if that offense is all stymied up and he sees a lane, he'll run it all the way. He'll run seven, eight, nine plays. He's going to do whatever it takes to get in that end zone. If it has for me to keep running, then I'm going to run to get us down the field. You know what I mean? Yep. I think sometimes Dak feels like he's got to throw us in, into the game. To, I, mean, I don't know about proving, but just feels like it sometimes that, you know, just the, the back the critiques off of him about throwing the ball, winning big games toward the end. So we'll kind of see what that happens and if that's going to really be incorporated. Um, also, before we get, get ready to close up out of here, yeah. Tony Pollard, he's a big name that's been in here. He's his contract's going to be up after this year, DDP. 
everybody's been screaming for more Tony Pollard, more Tony Pollard. Now we're hearing about how he's been playing a, a, quite a bit of receiver in these OTAs and been in the slot and doing more punt returning. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your kind of thoughts on T, uh, Tony Pollard? Is this fool's gold for us again? Just a lot of talk to get us all excited for him not to see the field. Or do you actually think Tony Pollard is going to get some work this year and they're going to really use him as a weapon? Let's say kind of like how San Francisco has the Debo Samuels of the world. I don't think they're going to use him like Debo Samuel, but I do think there's, I think he's going to get more usage than before. If for no other reason, than when, when did we talk about before we mentioned it in one of the last episodes, uh, the, the kind of parachute escape hatch or whatever for the mm-hmm. Cowboys w- regarding Zeke. Is that after right. this year or is it after next year? Um, it's after this year, actually after this year. Okay. So I don't think Pollard's getting a second deal here. You know, mm-hmm. you, you don't see Pollard jerseys in the uh, right. Zeke is the marketable. One. I get that. That said, I do think that there's a very clear bit of evidence now that Zeke is at the very least. It might not be 50 50, but it needs to be like 55 45 Zeke at that point um, in, in terms of Zeke to Pollard ratio. So I think he's going to get more opportunities but I'm also aware that it's not like it's a, a new offensive coordinator coming in or a second year guy. Helen Moore has been around. Pollard has mm-hmm. been in this offense. Mm-hmm. So like, it's not like he's rolling out a new skill set and Kellen Moore's just like, Oh, what is this? Right. Like, right. He, he's seen this. Right. Whether or not he's willing to actually honestly assess it and say like, have I really been trying to get the most out of Pollard that I can? Whether or not he's willing to do that, I don't know. But I'm always a I'll believe it when I see it kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And so when we go more than a month, maybe two months into the season, and Pollard is still getting comparable workload to Zeke and still producing and they're being creative with how they implement him, whether it's returning kicks or punts, um, whether they're trying to use him like Debo Samuel at all, then I'll I'll buy into that. But for the most part, Tony Pollard sounds like this ultimate utility weapon that they drafted that got everyone hyped and that they have largely not utilized. They've underutilized him for what he was advertised as being capable. You Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that uh, statement. I just feel like, you know, I, you already, I already told you my feelings on the season, DDP. Um, last year, I went into the season like we'll see because we didn't heard it time and time again. Mm-hmm. I drank, I drank that Kool Aid last year. I drank it um, because I felt like there were certain games that Dallas was getting over the hump. Two games in particular: a game against Minnesota when they won with Cooper Rush, yep. and that game against New England Patriots when yep. they were riding that winning streak. I was feeling like, okay, maybe they got over the hump because we've seen Dallas too many times lose those type of games, you know. But for me to see what happened in those playoffs. It was almost like, okay, same old Cowboys. So now I'm sorry. I'm just going to look from afar and, you know, I'm not going to believe the hype of Sam Williams because he got four sacks on uncontested uh, rookie who played in a small school. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I'm not, I I can't get hyped about that. Um, So it's a wait and see approach with me. Um, I heard too much of the hype around these guys. I heard too much of the hype around the offense of what we're going to do. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, we're going to do that. And it's always we're going to do this after we get our butts kicked. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You should always just be doing it just because. Not just, you know, all of a sudden we're going to change. We want to get more physical. We want to do this because of what happened. Okay, we hear you. Uh, but let's put it on the field and let's really do it. So anything that these guys are doing right now, um, um, let's see. Uh, but I'll be in training camp next month uh, nice. at the end of July. Uh, we're, it's our annual trip. So this is, will be year four. Um, so then I'll be able to see it through my own eyes, DDP and drop, uh, shows and, and go from there, but you know, Hell not yeah. believing the hype from somebody else's eyes any longer. But one, uh, one thing, one big thing that happened, uh, DDP in the Dallas Cowboys circle mm-hmm. was a long time Dallas Cowboys, uh, beat writer. Yep. And, you, you know, mentioned uh, him Dave, earlier. yeah, Dave Hellman. He's off to, I believe, CBS Sports, I believe, and he's still going to be covering Cowboy or is it that or Fox. I got to get it right, uh, but he yeah. still says he's going to be covering um, Dallas Cowboys football just over there. That um, for the so, team. Yeah, so um, you know, I, I I had Dave on a couple of my shows uh, personally, 
he's always been a good dude, always been a stand up guy, always been approachable. First time I ever met him was at the NFL combine in like 2018. And, you know, he was very gracious. We had great talks. So sad to see him leave DallasCowboys.com because he brought a really good element. But, you know, best of wishes on his new endeavors and his to be talking Cowboys football. What's your thoughts about that right quick? No, I, I agree. Uh, it, it's definitely kind of a closing of an era because he has been uh, a great source of information and insight uh, these last what was it, nine years. Um, he's always done great work. Um, I know when I was working for Blogging the Boys each week, like when you were one of the newer staff members each week, one of your kind of articles you were responsible for was like um, kind of the aggregating of like the Cowboys news. So it's like basically backlinking like these other articles, whether it's from the outlets like Dallas Morning News or whatever. And um, you're linking their story and basically having like a quote from it and a blurb. And I always made a point of finding whatever Dave stuff was always really. Yeah, um, I'm glad he's still going to be covering the team in some capacity, even if it's not for the team specifically. But uh, it's definitely, uh, definitely a good one.